Hi and welcome to episode 27 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Is Reportage and I'm a wedding photographer too. Today I'm honoured to be bringing you the one and only Tyler Workin. Known rightly so as one of the best documentary wedding photographers in the world, Tyler has an incredible amount of accolades and awards and with a vast amount of expertise and experience has long been teaching and mentoring photographers worldwide. We'll also be having a Facebook Live with Tyler soon where you'll be able to ask him anything about what he says in the podcast or just any questions at all. Stay tuned to our social media channels to find out when this will be. Stick with us today as Tyler shares so much, including his top tips for better documentary wedding photography, one of his big regrets, but why he's also glad he did it when he did, how social media has changed the perception of weddings, moments of embarrassment in his life, why it's essential for him to meet his clients before the wedding, the most important picture he's ever taken, and much more. Hey Tyler, how are you doing? Good, doing great, man. Oh, cool, man. Thank you for joining me. It's awesome. So, because yeah, you're, you're all the way over, you're in America, aren't you? Yeah, Kansas City, Missouri. Do you know where that is? I do not. My my American <laughs> geography is awful. No, it's anywhere near Vegas. I only know Vegas. Yeah, I only know Vegas. That's funny. <laughs> and Vegas is like the worst. It's like the worst of America, basically, is what Vegas <laughs> is. Uh, Missouri is right smack in the middle, literally like in the middle of the United States. Yep. Oh, OK. So you're quite far from the sea then. Yes, very far. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I need to see more of America. I've been to Vegas like six times now. I've never been anywhere else in America. That's bad, isn't it? That's a shame because Vegas is the worst place in America, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, really? Are you not a Vegas fan? No. No, I hate it. Oh, really? Yeah. Do, do you go there for like WPPI or anything? I, no? that, that's the only time I go there and I can last maybe three days. Uh, I, uh, I just I, I think it's all that's wrong with humans in one place. <laughs> I think that's why I like it. I think that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you... that's, that's the other side of the coin, right? <laughs> have, have you ever shot a wedding um, in Vegas? Yes, I actually shot. That was really fun, actually. I shot my wife, Pam, and I went there and shot a uh, elopement, essentially, okay. right? So I had to actually sign the marriage license uh, okay. for the couple because I was, you know, we, we were the only witnesses. It was just a couple and us. Oh, uh, cool. And it was actually one of my favorite ones I've ever shot because it was such a weird thing, you know? Yeah. So, Were you still yeah. able to do it in quite a documentary way? Because is, is it harder to shoot an elopement, really, in a kind of documentary kind of way? Um, actually, no. Well, yes and no. It was, it was not hard to do it in a documentary way, in my opinion. But I had to think about the story differently. Right. So like um, as a, as an example, I had this picture. So I got ready with the bride and her in their in their hotel suite, whatever. And my and my wife was uh, with the groom. Right. Going to the venue. So uh -huh. they didn't see each other beforehand and stuff like that. Well, when the bride was leaving the hotel room, she had all this stuff in her hands. Like she had her purse, her 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 flower bouquet thing. Okay. And she, trying to find her hotel key to lock the door, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I was there, and I could have easily held the door, but I'm like, I'm not here. Like, I'm just supposed to document this like I'm not here. So I had to, so I photographed all of her struggle with trying to do things <laughs> herself. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool, yeah. 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 And, it, and that, it's, I guess, I love. And that is always your approach, isn't it? So you're not even a photographer who, you know, some people class themselves as documentary, but they'll still turn, they'll open the curtains or close the curtains to a certain degree, or they'll ask the makeup artist to move to a different, you know, corner of the room where there's better light and things. Do you not do any of that kind of? Um, yeah, I don't stuff? because that's not documentary, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. No, I agree with you. I agree with you totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so now I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. This is commerce. There's no, there's no rules. There's no ethics that we have to do it a certain way. Um, so I understand that. However, I come from a photojournalism background and I was taught those ethics of photojournalism and documentary approach. So no, it's not, the bottom line is it's not my place to interpret what their wedding day should look like. Mm. It's my place to document what it was. Right. Yeah. That's, that's my purpose. Right. So yeah. that's why, that's why I don't do that stuff. And I don't know where to draw the line, to be honest with you. Right. I mean, there are extreme cases cause I'm doing it for commerce that I will break that rule for myself. Like, yeah. you know, but it's, it has to be something that I think is really worth breaking the rule for. 
you know? Yeah, so, yeah, totally. so I've, I just don't want to draw that line. And so I just decide to stay on the one side of it, you know? Yeah, cool. And I, I totally, I totally agree with that approach, you know, head to TIR as well. It's funny, you, you mentioned your photojournalism background there. And I read you, you once wrote, considered as one of my biggest life regrets, I left the newspaper business too early. Can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah. Do you still feel the same way? I do. And I'm still chasing that to this day. <laughs> right. Um, uh, okay. I should, I should, I should clarify that by saying it, it still is a big regret, but I'm glad I did it when I did it because the newspaper world sadly was a sinking ship at that point, but I didn't know it yet. Um, right. But so I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that, but I wish I had more experience in the field. Right. So um, I never held a, um, a staff position at a newspaper. I was either an intern or a freelancer. Right. So right. I graduated from the university of Kansas with a photojournalism degree in 1997. Right, okay. Well, and, a few years ago. Yeah, right. And I actually <laughs> did this a little bit differently. You usually did like an internship while you're in school, and right. then you graduate. I actually ended up getting the internship after I graduated. So I went to the Columbus Dispatch in Columbus, Ohio, for a three-month internship um, there. And that was incredible. And I really excelled there. I, did, I was doing really well, and they... They wanted to hire me, and that's right. the regret. That's the regret is as I was I was younger then. I wasn't. Uh, I, I'm a, I was a completely different person, and right. I was like, uh, I kind of miss home, <laughs> and um, I need to go home because I'm diabetic, and you know, I made all these excuses, right? right? Okay. And and I went and I went back home, worked for a couple newspapers as freelance for a little bit. Um, and then decided to go to work uh, for my dad as an electrician. Um, and then, so that's that regret is, you know, man, why didn't I, why didn't I just suck it up and go for it? You know, but I was, I was, I, I was, I'm a late bloomer, you know, and I was <laughs> like, and I, and so I wasn't as adventurous as I am now, unfortunately, you know, so, yeah. so, so, so that's where that regret comes from. I worked for my dad as an electrician for a few years and then m m maybe four, I think, and then realized I don't know if this is it either. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so um, that's when I started wedding photography in 2002. 2002, which is like, yeah, 18 years, 18 years. That is a long time to be doing weddings, isn't it, as well? It is, it is. And it's, um, they always say the expiration date or expiration point for uh, wedding photographers is 10 years. Right, okay. Right? And <laughs> Who, so says that? Who says that? <laughs> and it, it, somebody said it to me one time and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. and then 10 years hit and I was like, oh, crap. This is, <laughs> I think this is right. So I've made it eight years past. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard. It's honestly, it's hard. It gets harder as you get older. Um, yeah. Not not only physically, but also mentally, because as you get older, you and this is where I approach my wedding stuff from. As you get older, life changes. Your priorities in life change. You've actually gone through some stuff in your life. Right. And you start to really realize what matters, you know, yeah. and um, when you're when you're newly married at age 22 or 23, or 24, you haven't had those experiences typically yet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've I've often said that I think uh, I think we're doing this backwards. Right. Like you should just go get married at the courthouse when you're getting married at a young age. Just get it over with, make it legal. And then 10 years later is when you should have the wedding. Because now we actually have something to celebrate. Mm, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Right? Pretty, yeah. Because we're celebrating nothing yet. Right? Mm. All we're celebrating is the fact that we all love each other and it's two families coming together, which is great. But we kind of sometimes lose perspective on why we're really there that day, you know? Mm. And, and I think that that's ultimately what I am having trouble with as it, at, at an older age. I can't relate to the wedding industry as much anymore. Because I'm like, none of this, very little of this matters. Like, it doesn't, we don't care if your cake's different. What does it matter? Just eat it, you know? <laughs> yeah. so, you know, does that make sense? Anyway. Yeah, no, that's so true. I mean, and 18 years and it's so long. Have you seen the industry and weddings themselves change a lot in that time then? Has it, you know, from when you were first shooting in 2002? Not really. I mean, I don't think overall it hasn't changed that much. No. I think they've gotten um, worse. <laughs> in <terms laughs> 
In what way? You no, know, I mean, in terms of the whole, like, because I think what's gotten worse about it is I think social media has um, affected people's, people are just think differently nowadays, right? They, it's all about the look. It's all about what am I, what am I, uh, what perception of, of myself am I putting out there? And I want to show my bet, you know, think about Instagram and think about influencers on Instagram and, and they have to pose this certain way to make themselves look the best in every picture. You know, I mean, I think that that is a hundred percent affecting everything. And so I think they've gotten worse because I think, I think that, uh, um, the priorities, uh, for couples just because of the generation is different than what it was before. Right. In terms of, cause I've seen it, I've seen it where like my market has shrunk in terms of uh, finding people that really want what I do, which is showing the reality of things. Right. Um, yeah. And so the only thing I can kind of really put that towards is I want it to be a certain look. And I, it's, it's just, it's, it's all, it's, there's no depth. There's not as much depth overall to the events as, as, as there used to be in my opinion. Right. right. It's still there. Okay. It's still there of course. Right. But it's not, it, it seems, um, it seems not as much. Yeah, no, and I get, I get what you mean. I mean, I've not been doing it as long as you, but like about eight years or so in it. You know, a lot more nowadays is more about the trends and the and the kind of the material side and people wanting their weddings to be like grander than their friends' weddings and things. And yeah. as you say, it's it's not about that, is it? And and that is what you know. Obviously, with TIR celebrating the documentary side, and that's what you do, and that's what's yeah. great about your approach. Have you? Is your approach changed at all? That I guess it hasn't, you know, from the 18 years. Are you still shooting weddings the same as you shoot um, shoot shooting them now as you did like 18 years ago? No, um, I when I when I first started, um, I talk about this in my workshops, right? I show my I show my journalism stuff, which was which was pretty solid, right? Yeah. And then I show my first few weddings, and they're just horrible. Like, oh really? Just, okay. You know, I mean, back then it was different. People loved it still, but like comparatively, they're just like not good. And I always say, like, what happened? Why did I go from doing this to then doing this? And I, I always say that like I think it was because when I got into the wedding world, I thought I had to be a wedding photographer, mm. so I had to do it like wedding photographers did it right even yeah. though i still had my my journalism edge to it it was still just not good right and 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 so over the years i've especially as i teach it because i've been teaching this stuff for since 2005 when i when i first started teaching it at the foundation workshop with we win back in the day right. and so as i teach it my resolve for the documentary approach gets stronger and stronger and stronger so therefore, I have I have changed the way I approach it um, in terms of the the ratio of um, pure documentary to like you know the portrait time or things like that is drastically different than what it used to be when I first started. Oh, okay, yeah. that's interesting. So it's a lot higher. That's because. I was going to ask, has there, has, there, has there ever been a time where you've doubted your approach as being documentary? You know, I mean, has there ever been time that you've been worrying about the bookings, perhaps thinking that yes. maybe, you know, we should follow the portrait route instead or not? Yeah. So I do a lot of um, I do a lot of mentoring uh, with photographers all over the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think one of my colleagues down here in Cornwall, um, as men you've mentored him, actually. Who's that? Uh, Stuart Gervin. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's where you're at. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. And he yeah, raved yeah, about yeah. he raved about how you mentored him. So yeah, yeah, really he's cool. he he's he's awesome. I haven't talked to him in a long time. I need to reach out. But anyway, I hope he's well. But uh, um, so I'm not. I'm a very honest person, right? I'm not going to tell people just what they want to hear. <laughs> right? yeah, so that's cool. So I so I so I you know I you know all these photographers. So it it it's interesting because photographers love this style right because my theory is is that wedding photography is the gateway drug to real photography okay <laughs> okay like i believe that okay because we're all because because i'm kind of like why does so most of my clients okay i would say 90 percent of my of my mentor student students don't need more work okay, okay. they are they are book solid 
Right. So and why are I they go, coming to you? Yeah. Huh? Why are they yeah, coming so, to you? Yeah. So why are we doing this? Right. <laughs> yeah. why, why are we mentoring? And it's because they aren't happy with their own work. Right. Right. So so they want their photos to be better. They because it's all about like it's an internal thing, right? Because I'm like, you could go on like this for the rest of your career and you're you would be fine, right? Mm -hmm. So that leads me to believe that so many people are just kind of like that regret I'm still chasing, right? Mm -hmm. Is so many people are chasing that elusive, like they're all they're all like, well, I want I want people when they when they when they look at my pictures, I want them to know that I shot it. I want I want a style. I want a look. I want a this. I want a that. You know, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so, I don't know where I was going with this, but <laughs> but the point is, is that like uh, you know, I think, I, oh yeah, the honesty. So so they all don't need the extra work, right? They they. So, so they want to be a better photographer. So I tell them, I said, here's my experience, right? Is I'm in the same boat, okay? My, what I want to do is be a real photojournalist because I think right. I'm a photojournalist, F-A-U-X, you know, <laughs> photojournalist, right? Yeah. Um, and so I want to, I want to really make a difference with my pictures beyond. And I want to, I want to tell better stories. And that's chasing that regret from that newspaper world, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I tell them, I say, I say, if you want to be super successful as a wedding photographer, okay, in terms of not worrying about bookings, um, you know, you know, just just really playing the game at its highest level, I tell them you got to play the game, right? So, and playing the game is because the think about the majority of people out there when they first get engaged, what type of photography are they really wanting? Or are they thinking they want, right? So if you just give them that surface, right? Glamour, make everything look really fancy <laughs> and better than it was and yada, 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 and do all the slimming and the shenanigans, whatever you're going to do, I believe that you are going to have an easier go of things in terms of the business side and, and booking weddings. Because I have, I have these two mentor students that I just finished with and they play the game big time. Right. They they go to like five or six bridal shows a year. They they have um, they have, uh, uh, you know, you know, their business name is very like, ah, you know, like, oh, <laughs> that's, you know, whatever. Right. And yeah. And, but they're amazing photographers. They they truly are. But it's like, you know what, you guys and I even told them on the first session, I'm like, I think one of the problems is if you want to make your your work better, you got to stop playing the wedding game as much as you are. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, yes, to answer your question, I think a truly documentary style, especially in my market. Right. Especially where I'm located. Right. Okay. Is a harder, harder sell um, than than the kind of play it safe expected stuff. Mm, cool. Right. Yeah. And I yeah, I, I get what you're saying there. Definitely. And I, and I agree. But. Yeah, I just couldn't go down that route, though, of just shooting like how everybody else shoots. I know I totally hear you. And it would be easier in a way, wouldn't it? It would be easier uh, shooting that kind of glamour way. But it's just not what appeals to me at all. And I guess that's and never appealed to you. There's mm. my point of the of the wedding photography being a a like gateway drug to being a real photographer, right, <laughs> is because... Because that that's what my mom said to me one time. She's like, I was complaining about it. And she's like, why can't you just show up and just shoot it like they want? Mm. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't. Interesting, that. isn't it? Anyway, go it, ahead. Sorry. It is. No, no, no. It's cool. Yeah. But are you, are, you, are, you, are you proud to say you're a wedding photographer? Do you still class yourself as a wedding photographer? You know, even though you shoot documentary, do you still class yourself as a wedding photographer? Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I do, right? I mean, mm. I don't, I don't say I'm a wedding photographer. I say I'm a photographer. Yeah. And then if uh, people ask, then I tell them what I do. Um, You're I not don't, embarrassed by it, are you? You're not embarrassed. I think I am to a little bit. To a oh, point, really? Yeah, right? yeah. I really do because even though wedding photography has come a very long way. Mm, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, a very long way in the last <laughs> 15 years, whatever. Um, I still don't think the average Joe they still think of wedding photography as what wedding photography was back in the nineties. Yeah. You know, I really believe that. Right. Because the average person, they don't, they don't pay attention to this stuff. They don't ever look at wedding photography. They have no idea that 
organizations like yours exist that, you know, show oh, yeah. the best of the best, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I am because when I say wedding photography, I always follow it up with, yeah, but I don't do that crappy wedding photography. I do the documentary stuff. And they're like, oh, wow, that sounds interesting. Every single person says that. So, uh, okay, cool. So, 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 yeah, I think to a point, you know, I mean, I'm not embarrassed by it, meaning that like, I, I don't put my name on things or whatever, but, you know, <laughs> um, I think, I think I have to, the, the fact that I have to somewhat defend it still after 18 years means that either the perception is still not changed mm. or I'm not, I'm not quite where it needs to be. My, <laughs> oh, no, that's it. I find that really interesting. Yeah, I do find that really interesting. Yeah. Um, Let's go. Okay, let's change tack slightly. Um, a yeah. hypothet a hypothetical question here: um, If there was a global pandemic and weddings were thus no longer able to go ahead for the foreseeable <laughs> future, what advice would you give to wedding photographers? How how do you think you would feel? What would you be doing in that hypothetical situation? It's purely hypothetical. Right? Yeah, uh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> And, okay, so you said weddings would not be continuing, right? Well, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I I actually have a little experience in this, right? I've uh, kind okay. of, uh, you know, experienced a pandemic at one point. But anyway, so, oh, um, yeah. no, yeah. <laughs> um, I, so I've said for years, and, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I haven't said it, but I've felt for years that... Um, and now I'm saying it is that like, I don't think wedding photography is a sustainable career, right. even in a non pandemic situation. Right. I don't think you're going to retire as a wedding photographer. Personally, right. Okay. Personally, right. Uh, uh, why do you think because that? of that? Because of that expiration period and because of what I'm experiencing, right. right. In terms of just, just mentally, just trying to keep up with this pace for that long, I think. Mm. Right. So, so my advice would be um, to diversify as much as possible, honestly, right? right? Because, um, you know, I, I didn't do it early enough, right? <laughs> uh, but um, I talked about this. I just did a speech in Austin, right, at the Friends of Fearless conference, whatever. And I talked about this exact same thing. It's like, you better come up with an exit plan. Right, okay. Like, yeah. right now. And now's <laughs> the time, right? Because... Because it's just, I think everybody I talk to that's my age that has been shooting about as long as I have, that's all we talk about anymore is what are <laughs> we going to do? What are we going to do when we grow up? To be honest, right? So, right, okay. um, yeah. so diversify. That's that would be it. And then someone's like, well, how do you diversify? Well, I'm diversifying, and I have been for years with my teaching. So at least I've got I've got something else that I could kind of kind of you know you know do. Um, but I'm also, um, and I, and I, and I do some family work, some documentary family work, but, um, I'm, I'm now, um, for the last two or three years been working on, uh, transitioning more to the commercial world right? Okay. Uh, in the marketing and branding world and doing the, the documentary, pure documentary, authentic approach to storytelling, um, for, for, uh, brands and businesses and nonprofits and things like that. Oh, okay, cool. And do you enjoy yeah. that side as well? Then? I enjoy love it? it so far. I haven't, haven't like, I was literally just kind of getting going, <laughs> getting my pricing done right when this whole thing hit. Right. So okay. I kind of had to just like stop it. Right. Yeah. But, uh, um, so how long I, have you been thinking of like an exit plan? Is that come to a certain point in your career or some, did something specifically happen where you, you know, this puts it more in the forefront of your mind? Um, or did it, was this a natural thing, you know, that you're going to think about a slow, a slow thing that happens. And mm. I mean, like my kids are older now I'm, you know, the whole, like working on the weekends and, you yeah. know, I mean, that stuff gets old. Like, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. Right. <laughs> it just, true, yeah. it just gets old. And when, when, when the kids were young, it was no, it was no big deal. You know, they had to go to bed at, you know, seven o'clock, whatever. And it didn't matter. But, mm -hmm. but like, you know, now they're, they're, they're in their teens and we can do more and we can travel more and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and the weddings, cause we book them out so far in advance, they just kind of hinder that, you know? And, yeah. and I think it was just kind of one of those things where it's like, man, I don't, I don't. You know, I mean, when I'm in a wedding and I'm shooting it, I'm I'm still all in, right? I mean, there is there is there is nothing about that. It's just the 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 uh, kind of industry of it all that I that I'm kind of like it slowly was just like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it another ten years with this, right? right okay. And so and so that's when it started to creep up where I'm like, okay, the good news is is I'm not like done done, right? <laughs> I'm not like 
I'm not like, <laughs> done, done. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. Um, but I saw the writing on the wall at some point. Right. And I don't, I don't honestly know exactly when that was. Um, but I think I've been working towards this idea for, man, probably at least four years, if not longer. So, right, okay. Mm. No, it's interesting. I think that's really good advice as well. And that diversification. Mm. And, uh, honestly, I, I obviously like a lot of photographers felt like, uh, in hindsight, that would have been a great thing when this pandemic hit and, and not just to diversify within the wedding industry, but, um, you know, to diversify, yeah, in totally different industries, even outside of photography, maybe, especially with this, what's happening now. I don't know. Yeah, I felt I, guilty, I, it, you know, yeah. when, when this happened to, you know, because obviously my own wedding photography and this is reportage are both, both in the, in the wedding industry. So when this hit, I felt like, oh no, I've got my family reliant on an income that's in this one industry. You know, I felt this real sense of guilt. It's, it's a weird thing. It's horrible. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, if, if we're going to be honest, I mean, I've been, I've been thinking about this for a very long time where I'm kind of like, all right, part of me just wants to hang it up and go work for somebody else like everybody else does and just go to do their job. And like my neighbor, he's like one of our best friends and he's just, he loves his job and it's very secure and he goes and he does his work and he has fun with it and he comes home and he's just always happy, <laughs> you know, and, and. <laughs> And I'm like, part of me wants that. But then I'm kind of like, man, I just don't think that's in me mm. to do that sort of a thing. Um, yeah. But I also can't just give up on 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 my shooting like that, you know, and because yeah. I know for me that if I gave up on the shooting and I went to work for somebody doing non shooting stuff, I wouldn't shoot anymore. Right. OK, because I don't I don't shoot for myself. Yeah, you don't. You're not one of those photographers who's like shooting like eight hours a day and with his family and everything. No, never. I never no. have. I mean, like my gear is in the house now. Okay, it used to be at the studio, but we had to move it home because of the um, lockdown stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But um, my gear is in the house. I have no excuse now. Okay? <laughs> yeah, and I I never go pick it up, mm, yeah. right? Because I I did something last weekend with it. Um, my my wife and two boys have been training for a uh, I don't want to say marathon but it's a run right a little four mile um, uh, uh, run that a fun run they were gonna do and then, then okay. it got canceled so they're like well we're still gonna run it right so I got a few of my family members to cheer them on and so I'm like oh I'm gonna shoot it right and I got really frustrated doing it because when I'm shooting I I want so badly to do it as good as I can. Mm. And I think when I had that real camera in my hand, I know this sounds like really cheesy, but it's like I'm like all in or all out. Like I have to like I can't right. just like kind of do it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, that's so I got frustrated because I was like I I was trying to balance both roles. Right. And so I got frustrated because I couldn't really dive into the picture side of things. And it and it, and it, and it suffered because of it, you know, so. Right, okay. So yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a shoot for myself kind of guy. So I think I think I think that's part of it, you know. And so, mm -hmm. so yeah, I just gotta I just gotta keep going. <laughs> <with it. laughs> but but outside of the wedding industry, and that's why I think the commercial side is so mm -hmm. important to think about because I'm after 18 years, I'm kind of tired of the photography I'm doing as being a luxury, right. meaning it's not a necessity. Like we don't, I mean, wedding photography can be considered a necessity, but I personally am not. There are many other photographers now that are really, really good that can get the job done good enough, right? Yeah. In terms of if the budget's not there, right? A lot, of the, a lot. Of that you've been training them to be really good. It's yeah, your I know, fault, right? Tyler, I, know, I know, I know. I'm the, I'm the problem. Um, <laughs> I'm the problem. But, uh, but anyway, does that make sense? And so, and so, the commercial side, I. I see it as more of a necessity, right? Like we need to market, we need to market in a different way. Uh, let's, you know, we, we can justify the, the pricing more, whatever. Right. Yeah. I haven't proven that yet, but <laughs> that's what I'm hoping at least, you know, so I'm, I'm sure it'll be super successful as well. No, that's cool. That's cool, man. Cool. Um, cool. Let's change tack. Let's go off photography a second. Yeah. So, okay. If, if you could choose one day in your life to live over and over again, like Groundhog Day, have you seen Groundhog Day? Yes. Yeah. Do you like Groundhog Day? Do you Do like, I like the movie, the yeah. movie or the yeah. day day? Yeah. No, yeah, the yeah, movie, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Good. I love, I love a film yeah. anyway, but yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you could choose though, one day that you had to live over and over again, what, what day would it be? Jeez. <laughs> 
It's like the worst question I've ever been asked. I don't the even best know question. Is. The best question. <laughs> I've never. I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, I tell you what, though, this kind of goes back to the wedding photography thing, where everybody says it's the best day of your life, right? Um, weddings are. Um, it would not be my wedding day. There's that's would it not? For sure. No, absolutely not. Um, and no, I always I tell was... my clients that. I tell my clients that. I say this is a. This is not the best day of your life. And I tell them, I go, I hope it's not. I go, because if it is, then I feel really sorry for you because there's uh, nothing left for you after this. Like, it's all downhill, right? That's so true, isn't it? Yeah. It's an important day, but it's not the most, it's not the best day of your life. So as of recent, um, you know, I don't have a very good memory, right? So <laughs> just recently, those those friends I talked about that are our neighbors, they have a lake house. So it's like a, there's a nice. lake that's as close to the water as we get. And we go down there, whatever. We went down there just recently and uh, I'm a big Land Rover nut, right? Okay, cool. So I'm obsessed. I even have a like, you know, little tiny Land Rover model on my desk. Anyway, oh, nice. okay. <laughs> so um, we went down there to the lake and it was all of us. So my kids, you know, the dog, we took the Land Rover. It was just a wonderful weekend where I let my kids drive it off road. And oh wow, cool! How I old mean, are they? How old are they? They're uh, twelve and fourteen, oh, and so cool. okay. and so they're about uh, they are too young to drive a car, but I don't care, right? So we, <laughs> they can so reach the pedals, though. Reach the pedals. Yeah, right. I mean, how, how cool is that? That like the first car they've ever driven is a Land Rover Defender. That's you know, cool. yeah, right and, so. and that doesn't happen in the States, by the way. Right. And so and and it's a manual transmission. So I'm teaching them how to drive off road. And it was just my my friends were driving it and we were just having fun out there and doing That's some cool. cool stuff out in the woods in me, you know, and just having wonderful. Oh, and that whole weekend was perfect because uh, we had a we got down there and the water to the lake house was the, the pipe had burst. <laughs> OK. And, and I love adversity like that. And so we actually ended up fixing that. And then we had great stakes that night. You know, so that's, you know, basically a day where something goes wrong is and 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 I and it and with adventure is something that I would want to relive, right? Um, cool. I just thought of another one too. But basically it revolves around the Land Rover and mountains and my family and and just kind of and adversity. Okay. Uh, well, that's interesting. I love adversity. Right. Yeah, it's good. Well, that, yeah. So, have you always been like that? Have you, you, you know, like, as a kind of a, a continual life challenge? You know, you just because you know, a, a lot of people want an easy ride in life, but you like adversity, then, yeah. I like adversity in terms of manageable adversity, right? You know, things <laughs> okay, that yeah. are, you know, I always tell people for my at my wedding clients, I'm like, I hope something goes wrong at your wedding, right? I tell them. <laughs> Do you really because say that? Yeah. Manageable adversity is when the best in people come out, right? And it's when adrenaline comes out and then you feel this sense of accomplishment because you you handled something, you got through something. Right. If I always tell people everything easy in my life was never memorable. Right. You always remember the things that were hard in your life that you that you that you that you got through. Right. And so um, and I said manageable. Right. Because I don't want like major, major problems like house burning down or. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Dying, you, know, you know, things like that. Right. But like. So I think that I don't know if that was a I've always been that way. But my dad, my dad is really close and he's like the biggest mentor. Right. To me. And he he was that way. Right. He's always like, yeah, problems and solutions. Right. And so this actually came from the Land Rover and from off roading so much because you're out in the middle of nowhere and things go wrong. Right. You right, okay. you get stuck. You have a car problem. But you know what? When you handle those things and you get through to the other side. You have this sense of accomplishment and you're just, oh, those are the best days, right? So that's cool. Yeah. That's like a little microcosm of life as well, isn't it? Of an outview of life. I think that's cool. I love the way you mentioned your dad there. And I, and I love the way on your site you say um, that you learn to build photos from your dad. And he wasn't a photographer, though, was he? So could, could you explain to listeners what you were meaning there? He wasn't, but um, he's the one that kind of got me into photography because he, okay. he had like kind of an amateur, you know, had... He had 35 millimeter cameras and, you know, that kind of stuff. But right. no, he wasn't a photographer by any means. Um, yes. So uh, my dad taught me how to build things, right? He taught me how to 
how to fix cars. He taught me how to, um, but he actually taught me how to build things. Well, for I mean, he still does to this day, right? And um, the biggest thing was let's let's just take an, one example when I was an electrician, okay, working for him. Okay. You know what electrical conduit is, right? The metal conduit that they run wires in. Okay, yeah, kind of. I'm the most impractical person ever, but I'll go with it. Yeah, yeah the so pipe, yeah. the pipe, okay. metal pipes, metal pipes that they put on the wall that they have to put wires in, right? Okay, cool. So, yeah. so you have to run the pipe first, and then you pull the wire into the pipe, right? right so, right. so you have to you have to mount all this to the wall, and you got to do bends and all that kind of stuff. And I and I got it done, and he and I go, he goes, it's crooked, and I go, no, it's not. Because I was a stupid teenager, right? And I, I take my my level, right, and I put it on there vertical, and I'm like, "Look, it's perfect, Dad. It's perfect." And he says, "Yes, but it looks crooked." <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because of you're referencing it to the building, to right. the original building, right? That is not perfect. So as uh... soon as you make the new thing perfect it's going to look crooked because the building's actually crooked, right? So he says, you have to make it crooked to make it look straight. Uh, okay. And that kind of blew my mind. Right? That is cool. Yeah. So you have to fudge that stuff. And so that's just <laughs> one example of where that helps me in my compositions. Okay. In what way? What, in well, in terms of like building the composition, right? So, 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 uh, for instance, say I can't, say I can't, um, I can't get because of the lens choice or the where, where you know where I stood, I can't get everything like square and parallel like I wanted to, right? Whatever. Yeah. So now I've got to fudge it, right? So that way it's not as recognizable to the viewer's eyes, right? So, right. so for instance, um, say you got, and I know this is a podcast, so I have to try and explain this without any video. So <laughs> yeah. say you've got two lines that are very, two parallel lines that are really close to each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If one of those lines is crooked, you're going to notice it mm. because you're referencing it to both of them. But if that line is far away from that other line mm. in space, you're not going to see that difference. Right. Okay. That, that slight difference, right? So, so for instance, when there's a line at the top of the frame and it's crooked, well, that's going to throw people's eyes off because they're like, well, that's crooked. So then you either have to cut that down at the top of your frame through the viewfinder or you give it more space to kind of not let that be as, uh, as noticeable, right? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. just a small example, but I mean, everything we do, you know, he's always like, do it right. Take your time, and if it's not right, take it apart and redo it. That's cool, that's right? Because cool. that's what he said to me. He goes, "I think it was that it was it was another one where he, where he's like, well, that's crooked." And I go, "But dad, it's under a it's under a, a floor. No one's ever gonna see it." And he says, "But you're gonna know it's crooked, so mm -hmm. fix it, right?" Yeah, yeah. So that's that's where that kind of comes in too, where it's like, you know what? I got to take my time with these pictures, and I got to wait for what needs to happen, and it's got to be as good as I can make it. Mm. you know and so yeah yeah that's, that's cool and yeah. that's cool what has he thought about your career as a wedding photographer then is he yeah he loves it i mean he's very they, both my parents have been incredibly supportive i mean i mean even when i even when i i i didn't want to take over the business oh and what right? business was that was the electrical what, business oh, okay, yeah, right, he, okay. Had, he had a very successful electrical contracting business right um and uh they were extremely supportive about everything and they always have been they're just been they're really just amazing people and amazing parents and so they just today just before i got on with you he says he says hey i saw one of your um because i've been doing a lot of this uh uh content on on uh because of the pandemic i'm putting out yeah. all these workshops right yeah and he yeah. goes oh i saw one of those and he says that's amazing he goes you've been doing this almost your whole life teaching and we've never seen you do it that was so fun to see you do it oh, you know that's cool. so and so, yeah. yeah, even even to this day, it's so supportive. So. Oh, that's really nice. That's cool. Yeah, and you you mentioned there, and I'm a member of your group as well, uh, the Workshoppers, which is a fab name. Very good name, yeah. very good name. <laughs> and, and as you said, you've, you've created so much free content already. Can you tell us a bit more about that then and you setting that up? Yeah, man. I mean, 
I can't believe that I added it up the other day, and in the month of April, I've done 18 hours of content, right? Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's crazy, <laughs> right? But so, so yeah, so it's called, so the workshop series is W-I-R-K, so working workshop nice. series, right? Yeah. I've had that for, man, I mean, over a decade, I started that, right? right. And um, I've never really, again, I... Yeah, you, you got to play that game as well, right? Like you got to play the game of uh, social media, promoting yourself and, and you know, getting out there and being like, I do workshops and putting in winning awards to kind of build that business. And I never wanted to play that game. Right. Like I'm a really, I'm, I've gotten better, but in the beginning I was a really bad self, self promoter. Right. Mm. And so um, anyway, uh, when this, for years, I've been always wondering, like, man, what should I put my time towards? Should I put my time towards work in photo, which is my wedding and family business? And then recently, should I put my time towards work in media, which is the commercial business? Or should I put my time towards the workshop series, right? Mm -hmm. So I always mm -hmm. felt like I was giving a little bit to each, but not enough to one of them. Yeah, yeah. And so now that the pandemic hit, I'm like, I got no choice. <laughs> it it forced me to put the effort towards working uh, or, or the workshop series. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, you know, I followed the lead of some of my friends like Lanny and Erica, you know, um, yeah. uh, two men, you know, and uh, um, I have a business coach. Uh, his name is Dave Moss. He's really amazing. Um, he's actually going to be on Monday with the workshop series. Talking oh, okay, about cool. Business stuff. Next week is business week on the workshop. Oh, okay, series. cool. <laughs> Um, I don't know when this airs, but yeah, so this will be, this should come out on Thursday. So will people, oh, okay. if they want to join the group, you know, can you tell them how could, how can they do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh workshoppers. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it <laughs> was my, it was my Facebook group that I had for my workshop people. And there was about a hundred people in there and I hadn't posted in it since like 2016. Cause I just, you know, whatever, yeah, life. So yeah. following their lead, I decided to open it up to really anybody that wants to learn about this stuff. And so that's what I did during the during the pandemic. I'm like, I might as well get this content out there, get it online. So I opened this group up um, and it's called the Workshoppers. It's on Facebook um, and you just got to go and ask, ask to be uh, I have to approve people. Right. right yeah. But we're up to about a thousand members now, which is nice. Awesome. And, um, and so, yeah, so it's all like pure documentary. In April, we did every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I did content. So I had a I had discussion shops which are um, discussions with my friends and workshops, right? Every Monday. And then um, on Wednesdays, I did the work through it, where I go through some some of my own pictures and thought processes. And then Fridays are the hot seat Fridays, which is always critique. Right, and, so um, cool. I'm, not sure how it's gonna, I'm not sure how it's going to go into May yet. I don't know if I can sustain this. Through I'm another sure month. you will. You will. <laughs> it's just going down so well as well. Though. I have to say, you're so lucky having work in the beginning of your surname. The amount of puns and the ways you could use that is so cool. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to. Hey, for my whole life, I was the kid that always got picked last for everything because it was the W name. Oh, right? yeah. So <laughs> I, you know, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use this. Yeah, exactly. Well, it is working for you. Hey. <laughs> It's fun. You know, I mean, if anything, it's like getting me because I want to start a YouTube channel. So it's forcing me to get this content going and mm -hmm. and to learn live streaming. And and then I get to see all my friends who are just amazing people. Like, you know, I just did a critique with Kirsten Lewis last night and we has been on there and uh, Nikki Boone and Irwin. I mean, just amazing people that are so inspiring to me. And then we, we also did a critique with Lanny and Erica. They critiqued yeah. me and I critiqued them. That was pretty cool. So that's cool, man. And how are you finding that? Had, before this, had you done any Facebook lives or was it your first four? No, no, yeah. it was the first time. <laughs> I'm going to do the first one with this reportage on Monday. I'm not nervous, man. Do you find it nerve wracking or not? No, you, no, no, no. Any tips? Any tips? Um, I, yeah, I mean, you're you're really good at interviewing, right? So no, you. you know, you know, this is going well, and it's because you listen to what that person's saying, mm -hmm. and Sorry, then what? that will, no, that no. will help with the segues. You know what I mean? So uh, okay, um, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the hardest part is just the technical part, right? right like yeah, like getting the camera stuff going right. And um, I use uh, a software called Ecam Live, which is uh, 
really fantastic. It's just it 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 records everything automatically to your machine, so that's good. You don't have to remember, and the quality is really fantastic. So, yeah, honestly, your live streams look absolutely brilliant. Really, really, really yeah. good. And obviously, people listen to this. Do join that group because it's absolutely brilliant what Tyler is doing and the amount of content that he's giving out there. Honestly, it's so good. Um, that yeah. software you use though, is Mac only, isn't it? I think I'm PC man. I'm uh, one of the only photographers. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like I always felt like, you know, I worked hard in the beginning when this pandemic first hit. I worked hard to get the quality up because I'm like, this is a photography live stream. I really think that I can't get away with not good quality. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, yeah, I get that. <laughs> no, cool, it's let's... fun. It's fun. It's fun. That's cool. No, very cool. And let's change tech. Let's change tech again then now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people at the moment with the pandemic are watching a lot of TV. So do you have any, what's your favorite kind of Netflix kind of series? Are you much uh, of a TV watcher or are you not? No. Well, the absolute one that especially your audience needs to watch that they don't already is Ozark. Oh, yes. Cool. I've seen the first two series, but not the third series. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, that lake house I talked to you about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's in the Ozarks. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Cool. Do they actually film there then? Is that? Yeah. Is it... Funny enough, no. Oh, really? <laughs> it's actually I've shot learned... in Vegas or something. <laughs> I've, yeah, right. I've learned they actually film it in a lake in Georgia. Okay, right. Um, but it's, it is so accurate <laughs> in terms of even like, because they talk about Kansas City. I have to go to Kansas City. I have to go to Jefferson City. Like all these, this, that's where I live. So it is a hundred percent just like if you went to the lake. If I if you came and visited me and we went to the lake, it'd be exactly like that. Okay, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why they don't actually shoot at the real place. Then. I'm not sure. It might just be you know you know who knows. But I mean, yeah. it's like you know there could be like regulations, whatever. But it's it's so similar. Like right. they have done an incredible job, even down to like the Kansas City mafia guys. Oh, like right. that that family exists oh really you know, really like it's that crazy right okay. so yeah you haven't shot any of their weddings have you no no, no. <laughs> uh, but i think they exist i mean at least i know the may, maybe the name's slightly different but i mean it's like i'm like i remember that name anyway so <laughs> i you know you know ozark is my favorite um oh, cool. is the third uh, series good is the third series oh good, dude is it? <laughs> yeah Okay, it'll That's blow true. your mind, right? <laughs> okay. One that I love recently, which takes place in the UK, is the 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 Stranger. Have you watched? Oh, that? I've not seen that. No, what's that about? I've not seen that. It is incredible. Like it is, uh, it is crazy good, mm -hmm. and um, it's about this stranger, this person who kind of like blackmails people. Um, but it goes like so, in it's all intertwined. It's it's one of those shows that's like super intertwined. You know, where like all the all the um, all the stories are separate, but they all end up working together. Oh, man, you got to watch that. I okay. love that. Yeah, that sounds good. OK, is that on Netflix as well? Is that Netflix? thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 OK, sound. OK, cool. I'm going to check. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to watch the third series of those dogs. OK, cool. Um, has has I've never asked this question before, but has there been an occasion where you've been really, really embarrassed at a wedding or otherwise? Yes. Um, <laughs> There's many times. <laughs> um, I think the first ever time that I remember being super embarrassed is as a kid. We went to the swimming pool. I kind of remember this. I was with my sister. Okay. And I thought I had my swimming suit on under my shorts. And I took <laughs> my shorts off. And I was <laughs> standing there naked, I think. Um <laughs> And I'm like, ah, you know, oh, so I was super sorry. embarrassed about that. That um, would stick in your memory. That would definitely stick. In your that would stick in my memory, right? But you know, you know what's funny about embarrassed at a wedding? I'm to the point in life now where like that doesn't really bother me anymore. I kind of just try to own the embarrassment, right? right yeah. Because it all of this stuff that embarrasses people has happened to everybody else, right? I mean, like you know, so it's it's. Uh, I mean, I was shooting a wedding one time. And uh, I, I was the only photographer there, and it was a destination wedding. It was a, a f photographer friend of mine. Okay. And right when the ceremony started, I, I I kneeled down to get a to get an image, and my pants split open a little, <laughs> right? Awesome. And then as I kept shooting, it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. By the time the <laughs> ceremony was over, my entire leg—I have a photo of it—my entire leg was hanging out of my pants. Nice, cool. 
right? And I'm like, you know what? I just got to own it. I mean, like, I mean, I was embarrassed, but what am I supposed to do? I had to go back to the hotel and put blue jeans on and then come back and keep shooting the wedding. So, yeah, that was that, that was a bit embarrassing. Yeah. No, that's funny. No, that's cool. That's cool. Do you think, do you think, you know, I'm just saying a lot of photographers, especially when they start out, I think they think when they turn up at a wedding, they they need to act like very professional, almost like a persona. They have to almost, you know, pretend to be someone they're not. Um, have you always been different to that? Have you always think, you know, with me, I think you just got to be yourself. Have you always been like that? Or have you changed, you know, from starting out into how you are in the recent years? Um, you seem just, you're very comfortable in who you are, I think. I, I am now. <laughs> I, not, I wasn't always, right? Because yeah. um, if I was, I would have uh, continued that journalism career a little bit longer, probably, right? But... Um, no, I am myself as as much as I can be, oftentimes to a fault. <laughs> right, okay. Honestly, right? I mean, <laughs> there are times where my wife's like, did you just say that? And I'm like, yeah. You know, because <laughs> when you do this, and I think a lot of that has come from wedding photography, right? But also because of my teaching, right? So I've I've taught so many workshops and I've dealt with so many different people that mm. like, I would be afraid to say something in front of them or something because I don't know how they would react. Mm. And by the end of the workshop, they are, we're all just the same. It's just other people are saying the things more than mm. other, than, than the rest of them. Right. And so, mm, um, I, you know, you know, I, I think ultimately you need to be yourself, right? I think that, uh, I think that people can sniff that out. People can sniff out when you're being fake. Yeah. Um, but, I do believe that you have to adjust how you are to the situation sometimes. So like if I'm if I'm acting the way that I am where I'm kind of loud and I use a lot of words and all that kind of stuff um, and something's really intimate happening, I need to adjust that so I can it, as a wedding photographer, because one of the most important rules of photojournalism is to respect the integrity of the moment. Right. Sure. And yeah. so and so you got to kind of push and pull that a little bit. Right. And I think mm -hmm. that if you're an introvert there's times where you have to extrovert yourself mm. to kind of get where you need to be photographically and then you can go back and vice versa. So, right. Yeah. No, that sounds cool. And generally just what I think about it now, cause I know people have different kind of approaches. What is your general approach in terms of, you know, your general coverage in that, do you ever, are you talking at all to the, the people that are in front of you at all? Are you interacting with them? You know, a lot of photographers like to banter with the people that, is, uh, that are around them. But then there's the opposite approach where people, some people are just totally silent, you know, and don't want to interact at all with, with people. Uh, how, how, what's your approach in that kind of, kind of way? I think you have to interact in my opinion, right? So mm. the only way that you can really gain trust is by, um, talking and, and in, and, and kind of, uh, you know, addressing that awkwardness, right. Mm. Um, especially in the documentary, uh, uh, world, the problem is the art is, um, <laughs> the art is knowing when to shut up and shoot. Right. <laughs> and so mm. I think, I think trying to, trying to break that conversation because the other people will just talk the whole time. Right. Mm. Um, because it's awkward trying to break that conversation and reset the scene and get back into being a, 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 you know, a documentarian that's there's, there's, there's a trick to that and there's a skill to that. Right. And so there's that balance. Right. So I think, I think that um, you can do that, but you have to try and figure out when to, when to, when to jump in and when to not jump in. And you can feel that out by feeling out and reading the people that you're photographing. Yeah, yeah. You got to pay attention to how they're acting, right? You got to, and I think a lot of photographers don't do that. I, I think a lot of photographers get so tunnel visioned on trying to get what they want mm. or, or the picture in front of them. They don't, they're not reading the room. They're not, they're not, they're not really paying attention to how they are interacting and affecting the scene. Right. right? Yeah. So, and so that's where you got to push and pull that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And that, that people side is so important, isn't it? No, um, yeah. Do you think it's is it important to you? Do you generally meet most of your clients before the wedding? For example, is that important to you? Uh, it's it, it's essential. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so cool. I That's spend, interesting. Yeah. I spend on average um, between the initial consult and the planning meeting, I spend at least four hours FaceTime with my clients before the wow. wedding. Wow, really? Wow, that's really interesting. Have you always done that or is that more of a recent yes. thing? Or, yeah, yes. oh, cool. Okay. Um, it's essential. I mean, there, 
I think they got longer. The meetings got longer as, <laughs> as I realized how important they were. But oh, okay. it is vital to my success as a documentary photographer because I need to make sure we're on the same page. And I need to try, I, I need to get their trust. Um, and uh, because I tell them, I go, I expect, I go, you expect a lot from me, obviously. I expect mm -hmm. one thing from you, and I expect complete access into your lives on that day. Right. right okay. Mm -hmm. I might not get it, but I go in expecting it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, because I have to. And so, but in order to get that access, I, I, they need to trust me. Right. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. and so, yes, I, I will not book a wedding unless I have the initial consult via Skype or in person, I won't book the wedding because I need to make sure that it's a, it's a good booking and we're a good fit. Oh, wow. That's really, that's, that's very cool, man. So, so even if someone was going to give you like 50 grand to go and shoot a wedding, <laughs> just, <laughs> but it, I, now. <laughs> no, but I think advice and just show up and shoot it. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, because, no, because, like, it, as you go through this and especially with my style, my style takes a certain person that's okay with with that approach, right? And yeah. have to make sure. Otherwise, if we're not a good fit, it is not going to work. Yeah, no, it's so true. Have you ever turned down potential work then? From... Um, not, not really. I mean, I've, I have, uh, I used to like sabotage the meetings when I knew it wasn't a good fit. I would just start talking about things that I knew they didn't want. <laughs> okay. Um, it's funny. I, I just don't think it's, I, I think it's rude for me to just be like, this is not going to work. This is not mm. what's good for me. You know, I think that's kind of like, you know, so, yeah. but there was one person, I didn't turn it down, but she, she could understand what I was talking about. Um, I always ask at the start of my meetings, I say, what do you want from your wedding photography? And she said, I just want to look good. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm. And I said to her, I can't guarantee that. Mm. Like, that's not my thing, right? So then we went through the meeting and she could tell that, you know, and I knew it wasn't a good fit. And so at the end, she's like, so you don't think this is going to work? And I go, I just, I don't think I can make you happy, right? right so okay. I said, I said, and then I come to find out she had already hired somebody who was the complete opposite of my style. Uh, okay. And she didn't like the engagement session. Uh, and so I told her, I said, you know what? I think you're overcompensating. I think there's somebody in the middle that is a, nice blend of these two different ways is what you need so mm. Mm, that's a win-win all around isn't it it's yeah, no good for I didn't, I didn't like tell her no but i basically was like i just don't you know and and so i've gotten to the point now where i can really tell ahead of time if this is going to be a good fit or not you know and um yeah and then i can kind of uh i can kind of head it off but i have to do it in a nice respectful way you know because yeah. it's not their fault they they are this way or they want that they just no. need to get it you know, so yeah, because there's no right or wrong in what people want, isn't it? Everybody likes different things. So there's know, also and, no right or wrong in terms of what photo and styles of photographers do in wedding photography. Exactly. Like you can literally do whatever you want; it doesn't matter. You know, so mm -hmm. and that's the yeah. beauty of it. It's the beauty of it. It would be so boring if we were all shooting things exactly the same way. You know, oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, but you get those arguments where people's like, "No, you gotta be documentary." I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Oh no, same here. I know, man. I, I know. We'll do. <laughs> it's whatever you want to. <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. Um, I know this is obviously something that you could talk about for ages and forever, but I think a lot of listeners would would be really interested, obviously, coming from you. What would be your top tips to help someone become better at the documentary side of wedding photography? So whenever people ask me uh, or people, I have people come up to me, you know, often and they're like, I'm not happy with my work. You know, I want to do better documentary stuff, whatever. And I tell them, um, which is uh, the first step is I, I tell them, if you want to get better and have your work be different, then you got to stop thinking like a wedding photographer. Okay. Okay. That's step one. And that's what I did. Remember back in the day when I said I had to do like a wedding photographer and then I changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So I'm a documentary photographer that does this at weddings. Essentially is what I think now. Right. Right. Okay. So you got to stop thinking like a wedding photographer. Um, and then within that, then you have to then change your perception and commit to the moments. Okay. Right. So um, that was the second thing that changed things for me was uh, I went to foundation workshop as a student in 2004 and I met all like many of my lifelong friends from that one time. Right. Mm -hmm. And there is a good friend of mine. His name is Brooks Whittington. He doesn't shoot anymore at a, at a, at a Texas, but he was like my documentary inspiration, right? Like, 
I shot with him one time, and he he made me wear an earpiece so we can talk to each other. That's oh, what cool. his wife okay. did. Yeah. And I moved a door open to kind of get a front, get a better, like like a tiny bit. And he like he's like <clears throat> in my <laughs> ear to tell me not to do that. Like that's how pure. Oh wow. Pure Brooks was right. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I asked Brooks one time. I'm like, dude, how are you getting these moments? Like, am I not good enough? Are they not <laughs> at my weddings? Am I not seeing them? Like, what's going on? And he says to me, he goes, well, how are you running the day? And I told him how I was doing my schedule back then where we do a first look and then we do portraits and then the ceremony and then we do more portraits and then the reception. And he goes, well, dude, you're not letting anything happen. Mm, right, and I'm right. like, it was like a Mack truck hit me like, like a ton of bricks. I'm like, oh, yeah. So that makes sense. Mm. Right. And so you got to commit to it, right? So I've had I've had many students that are trying to do like the two different things. I want to do all these fancy portraits with all my tricks and my iPhone reflections and whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I also want these moments, and I'm like, well, you got to commit to one of them, you know, because you can't do it all really well. Yeah. You got it. You got it. You got to balance that in a different way. So mm. you said no. top five. No, top, just top tips. You could. There's not oh, a certain okay. number. You could. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my top tips because you got it. It truly is a mindset, right? Yeah, it truly is a mindset. And just like regular real photojournalists who do big photo stories, they spend more time prepping and researching than they do shooting. And so that's all has to go into that same approach, right? And so, right, yeah. um. Oh, that's cool. That's great advice, man. That's awesome. And oh man, that's honestly this is this has gone uh, so quickly. But I think we just got um just time to just one more question. I could I've got so many more. I could just go on for it'd be like a six hour podcast, which I, I know, right? <laughs> Um, it's a lot um, of years of teaching this and doing speeches and stuff. It's all kind of there. Condensed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um so I know this is probably a super hard question, but can can you think of a certain photo that you took that's had some kind of lasting impact? Perhaps that impact has been on your career or your confidence or your direction or just an image that's just particularly memorable to you for some reason. Um, does it need to be wedding specific, but it could be yeah, just a certain image that you've took that's had some kind of impact? Yeah, you know, usually what matters to me is not the photo, but the process. Okay. Right. So I I live I I live for the process of shooting the pictures and the experience more than I do the end result. Right. right. Okay. Um. But so with that, um. In what way? What do you mean about that process then? Uh, being in being in the in the in the moment. Right. right? Okay. Like like yeah. being there. Um. I. It's no different than the adversity that I like when I'm like in my Land Rover trying to get over some mountain pass that is that is hard to do right it's mm-hmm. like it's like uh i it's like watching an athlete that will do something all at once in this moment and you're just like oh my god that was amazing right and right, so right. i love the idea of um my process my my you know my anticipation um putting light moment composition together feeling the energy of the room um, mm-hmm. making it all come together and then boom, the image happens. And I, and I, and, and it all, it all happens in harmony with each other. Right. Like I love that adrenaline rush of that That's and, cool. yeah. and trying to figure it out more than I do coming back. I typically, when I shoot a wedding, I don't down, I don't even download my cards till like the next Monday or Tuesday. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Right. Because I just don't, I mean, at that point it's like, well, you know, the picture's great, but I I like the process. You like the pro- yeah, no, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but if you're to answer your question, there is um, the only picture that ever comes to mind is uh, the day that my second, our second son Zach was born. Okay. And so it's in where you know in the hospital. I'm not even I'm not in the picture because I shot it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it it's my wife Pam in 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 the bed. And my um, at that time, Alex would have been two because they're two, right. yeah, two years apart. Okay. Around two, Alex is laying and snuggling with Pam in the bed, and right next to that, to 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 the bed is the bassinet with Zach still in the hospital, right? Yeah. And so that's the most important picture, right? Because yeah. that's when that's when we were a complete family, that's right? Your family, that's, yeah. Yeah. Aww. So that's I lovely, find man. That photo. 
I gotta find that photo. <laughs> no, that's beautiful, man. That that is that is really lovely. Oh man, oh, oh thank you, thank you so much for your time and sh- and your honesty and openness. I really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you. It was awesome. Yeah, no, it was great. I was honored to be here, and I think I think what you're doing is a uh, is a is a, is certainly a good thing. Celebrating this. Uh, this style you know and so i uh oh, thank you man and um and i, and I love all my uk people so oh they're, they're, we're good eggs over here we're good eggs we're good eggs and yeah. and but but i we never met properly but i saw you talk at the first nine dots gathering and you were brilliant man you were so yeah, great you, you were so you. great um so if anyone's listening honestly um you know if you I, I was gonna say i normally say whilst you're editing but you're probably not editing a wedding at the moment but if you're maybe doing a, a run or something you know head to the site this reportage.com and i'll show um examples of tyler's work a link to his his various websites and a link to that facebook group as well that we were talking yes. about honestly you do join it it's amazing what he's doing there and i'm actually um, getting ready to because uh, i've had some requests i'm getting ready to uh in the next couple of weeks to roll out an online workshop that nice called the it's called the art of the moment and it goes through everything that i do from my my client relations to how i shoot and all that kind of stuff so oh cool. well that sounds so, great and i'll put a link whenever that's properly released as well man awesome um yeah yeah, and honestly, oh, no, oh, that was so great. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. And hopefully I'll get to properly meet you one day in the flesh. Yeah, to nine dots it. again sometime or, or doc day, over, you know? I used to get over there quite a bit. I don't know if you know Ben Toms. Um, I, I know of him. I've never met him, but... Yeah, yeah. he's a, he was a past mentor student of mine, and we have now become Land Rover buddies. He bought a <laughs> Defender, and so, uh, we, you know, I, we, have, we have plans to hopefully... Uh, um get back over there again and so it would be fun to uh but you're so far away though you're like i am in like, the very tip yeah southwest <laughs> you're like so far away stuart That's... talked about stuart talked about bringing me out that way down that way for a workshop sometime maybe we just need to make that happen you know oh so. yeah that'd be cool yeah definitely that'd be awesome man it's so it's funny talking about land rovers you know i can only drive an automatic i've only got an automatic license so i can't even drive a manual car they have different licenses yeah, they do in the UK. Yeah, you can just get an automatic license. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's interesting. That's so yeah. funny. I mean, <laughs> there are some defenders that are, of course, automatic, but that's so interesting that they do that because uh, over here, they don't even have like manual cars anymore. Like you can't <laughs> hardly get a manual car. So <laughs> different worlds, man. Different worlds. Yeah. Cool. All oh, right. Man. Thank also, you, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your time, man. Keep safe. Yep. You too. Bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to the 27th episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. Tyler was fab. Hope you enjoyed listening. Remember, we'll be having a Facebook Live with him within the next week or so where you can ask him literally anything. Stay tuned to our social media channels to find out when this will take place. We're This Is Reportage on Facebook and Instagram. Head to thisisreportage.com to see lots of examples of Tyler's work as well as links to his websites and the Workshoppers Facebook group we talk about in the episode too. We also have lots more episodes of the podcast already released with photographers such as Rocio Vega, Stephen Hairshaft, Frank Boutonnet, Anna Rowland, Ross Harvey, and many more. If you have a spare moment to leave us a review on your podcast service of choice, that would be massively appreciated. It's lovely to know that you're enjoying them. And if you're not yet a member of this reportage, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 reportage award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts and more. The deadline for our latest round of awards, collection 15, is soon. Submit by 2359 BST on 24th of May 2020. No poses, nothing staged, this is reportage. And this is bye for now. Mm-hmm.